Welcome to the future. I am a robot. Yes, you're right. I'm not really a robot. I'm a man doing a voiceover for the Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. But、uh, tell me, did I trick you? No. Oh. Oh well. Sorry for wasting your time. And here's the Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. Okay, so I don't want to get you guys too excited, but on the weekend, I was touched by a celebrity angel. And if you were touched by a celebrity angel, if you were lifted up by a person who is better than you. A celebrity, <laughs> better than you because they're a celebrity. Call us on oh eight hundred the edge or text into three three four three. This is my moment, my claim to fame. Okay, I moderated a political debate、uh, on Sunday night. Oh, brainy! I was going to say, well, it was pretty full on. It was quite interesting, and it got to a point at one point where Colin Craig, Maggie Barry, and Hila, Lila Hari、okay, almost、so、had a fight. You just brought the tone of the political debate down. Yeah, yeah. I was like,、oh, that sounds cool. And then you're like, those people are there. I was like, oh, cool.、Oh, Was this the joke debate? I almost <laughs> no, no, no. It was a serious debate, and it almost turned into an absolute melee. And I had to divide. I had to keep the peace. I was the moderator, and it was a lot of work for two hours. They're going hammer and tongs, arguing, and I was there just trying to keep it light, telling everyone to chill, chill going out. Going hammer and tongs, hammer and tongs. That's an expression, isn't it? Yeah, Is that a sex term? Yeah, it normally means they're doing. Well, I wasn't sex having、thing. sex at the thing. I was just, I was just moderating it, and I was trying my best, is what I meant to say. Okay. And when I left the venue, I was walking out feeling tired and exhausted from keeping these politicians. Under wrap all day, and just as I was leaving, a golden angel came at me from behind. She touched me on the shoulder. Yeah, it was Susie Cato. <gasps> Susie Cato, my childhood hero. See you, see you later. You'll be back again. That Susie Cato, she came up to me and she said, "Guy, it was tough up there, and I think you did a good job." We- I felt like a million dollars. Was she wearing、um, real big frames and a、uh, um, fluorescent <laughs> multicolored sweatshirt? <laughs> no. But what was amazing about her is that she didn't look any older than twenty years ago when she was doing television.、Wow. It's wonder, actually amazing. What is she doing now? Um, she works and she like produces children's television and、okay. stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. And I just felt like when she flashed that Susie Cato trademark grin at me,、yeah. I felt like a million bucks. I walked off down the street, even though it was raining, skipping. I was、wow. in full skip because I was touched by a celebrity angel. Good for you. I'm glad you had an enlightened experience on the weekend. It's a feel good. It's a feel good story. You're not the only one, guy. We've got Jackie on 0800 The Edge. Jackie, who was the celebrity angel that touched you? <laughs> Calvin Cookshank. Wow.、Oh, okay, okay. In what way did Calvin touch you? Yeah. Okay, we were at a bar in Havelock North. This was a couple of years <laughs> back, and he just happened to be there with his, you know, producers and all that. He was doing a show somewhere up those ways,、mm-hmm. and、um, we sort of got talking, and that, and then he disappeared for a wee while, and then he come. We went to leave, and his. Producer or manager said, "No, no, no! You have to wait. You have to wait." And he came running around the corner, and he had a book. He'd run back to the motel to get me one of his books, and he'd signed it in the cover. Wow! And then, yeah, and then he gave me a big hug, and he whispered something in my ear. And to this day, I still don't know what he said to me. <laughs> I burst out crying, and he just looked at me and he said, "It'll be all right,"、He's、and in- that's. Yeah, amazing! That's incredible. He said, "My phone number." Yeah, it was. I know. I'd love to know what he said to me, but yeah, I, <laughs> please, I don't remember. Please come back to the motel. I'm very lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to rain on your parade. But the next four people who have been touched by celebrity angels is ten times better than Susie Cato, and that's saying something because Susie Cato is a big deal. It's amazing, Deb. Your person's no longer with us, but who was yours? I know. I was really gutted when I heard he'd passed away.、Um, I was. It was Robin Williams, actually. Oh, I know. Oh, he was just so awesome. I was working at a hotel here in Topo, and、um, we had lots of celebrities come through. So I could, you know, give you a whole list of, you know, people I've chatted to. But this one really just touched me because, you know, sometimes celebrities can be real plonkers, you know, and they、yeah. can just ignore you, and、mm-hmm. you know,、yeah. they don't. They don't have to go out of their way for you. They, you know, they're just on holiday. Yeah. And、um, yeah, serving him and、um, him and his family, and、um, yeah, he just, you know, he took his time and he. Did put on some funny voices and he did a few acting little bits of the Am- table. Amazing! And- That's、oh, yeah. so. He's that is- putting on a show. What's that? He was putting on a show. That is so incredible. Wow! That- Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Deb. That is a pretty hard one to beat. We've got Belinda on the line, though. Belinda, who's your celebrity angel? Ah,、uh, Bill Murray. Where did、oh, you meet? Good. Where did you meet Bill Murray? 
Well, it was a few years ago, so it was. I've been well touched by him. It was when um, oh. the ghost, <laughs> Ghostbusters was huge, and he was just such a hot ticket <laughs> in LA. Yeah. And I was at a club called Vertigo, yeah. and and he made this beeline for me, and I was getting all like, "Oh my God, what's he coming up to me for?" And he just walked up to me, put his face right up to me, pointed to me, and said, "You look." Hot. That is wow. Because, that, I am not trying to hit on you. I'm walking away. I just wanted you to know that. That's oh. a great line from Bill Murray. That is incredible, Belinda. That that's going to be tough to beat. Also, I think that's my favourite one so far. But we've got Kayla on the line. Kayla, one of the biggest rock stars in the world, touched you. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was pretty cool. Who, Who was, was it? it? Bruce Springsteen. Oh. The boss. So when did yeah. the boss uh, come and I can't touch, touch you. you? When, when were you touched you? by the boss? Um, well, he came over in, in March to play and we were, my mum and I were at the front row and he um, saw my sign that said dance with me, Bruce, it's my birthday and he pulled me up on stage. Oh, oh legendary. That, Incredible, Kayla. That is some quality touching right there. We've got one more. Hey, Hugh, who was your celebrity angel that touched you? That doesn't sound better any time. No, it never sounds any better. <laughs> Tell us your story, Hugh. Uh, well, I was walking down the main street in Blenheim and Richie McCall was there for Dan Carter's birthday. Oh, my God. His okay, wedding. okay. Wedding. What, 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 what was he wearing? Oh, I actually don't remember that. His all black uniform, <laughs> duh. What did he, what did he smell he like? Dan Carter's wedding and I walked past and everyone was following him, and I just walked past him, I was like, hey, Richie, and put my hand out, and he high-fived me, and I was like, holy shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> you were, you were uh, literally, Richie! figuratively and literally, touched by a celebrity angel. He touched you on the yeah. hand. How long did you go yeah, without washing that hand? Oh, I didn't wash it. I still haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Neither would I. Neither would I. I, I, put a, I put a shower cap over it whenever I go to shower. <laughs> oh I understand your pain because I, I got a photo with him once and he, and he like pulled, put his arm around me and pulled me in and the side of my boob touched his side. Oh, good so day. Now, now when I shower, I wash everywhere but one side, like one side and of sh- my, my sh- right breast. And Sharon has one real stink tip because of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lots of touching, quality touching. Thank you for sharing with the group this afternoon. Guys, Sharon and Clint on the edge. In studio with us now we have the uh, masterful Chang Hung. Good Chang. afternoon, Guy Williams. Thanks for joining us on the show, mate. Chang, for those of you who don't know, is uh, a very intellectual man who reads <laughs> many newspapers throughout the day and finds many interesting tidbits that he would like to share with Do us. Do you read any um, of the Chinese newspapers? I cannot read Chinese. Oh, you can't read Cantonese? Yeah. No, I can't. You can only speak it? Yeah. Nihon what about Fijian papers? Do you read those? No. <laughs> you can't get any here. Chang's half Chinese, half Fijian yeah. for new listeners. What about the, the Nelson Mail? Do you read the Nelson Mail? I'll read the front page of the Nelson Mail once in a while. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. What have you found in there this weekend? So, this was from the Herald on Sunday yesterday about uh, call centers on hold for tele- uh, telecommunication centers. Okay. Yeah. Like Vodafone's when you call telecom. Yeah. Uh, all the co- uh, Like how long the holding time oh, is. Oh, God. I it's, hate being on hold. I hate being on hold, but I love listening to sweet, free New Zealand music. <laughs> no, <laughs> because everybody just has nature's best compliment. Oh, yeah. Everyone. No, but, oh, what else? Some people have Shafu. That's on nature's best. How, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's Through falling hearing. leaves, I pick my way slowly. <laughs> All I'm asking for is a bit of King Capisi. Foy, foy, feya. Foy, foy, feya. I reckon um, Shafu sometimes, it sounds so realistic that he's just doing it live there at the Winds <laughs> office. That's a gig. He's doing a gig yeah. down the phone lines. Okay, Chang, what are some of the worst offenders? Um, Vodafone, who kept them on hold for under 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, stop too so bad. is that the best or the worst? Uh, that's that's the worst. Is it the best of the worst? Oh, yeah, two degrees took only a minute. Oh, that's, oh, that's good. good. That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, but that's because they don't have any customers. <laughs> they have customers. They have customers. You were You have two degrees. <laughs> Aren't you on two degrees? Yeah, that was me that called up. <laughs> <laughs> and then slingshot at a minute 30. So it gave me the the idea of... So, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, those stats we do, we do need to make the comparison right mm. now that there's two smaller companies and a massive corporation. Yes. So of, I don't think that's a very fair assessment of... It's okay. It's okay, okay, okay but, but the, we're, we're not digging into the holding time. Was we're, one we're, 20 minutes and the other a minute and a half? You yeah. got your numbers right there? Yep, slingshot, a minute and a half. Well, that's insane. Mm-hmm. How did my company Telecom do? Um, it's not actually written here. They were so long. Still on hold. They were so <laughs> long that you didn't give up, eh? Hey? <laughs> they'll, so, so, they'll be in next week's Herald on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so it gave me an idea. What if we had a caller, like a listener of ours, on hold 
Yeah. It's three thirty now. Yeah. On hold until our show finish, which is oh, seven show. o'clock. That's wow. a great idea. That's Wait, a long what, what, time. what time's our show finish? Seven o'clock. Well, oh, that's a long time. That's Why would we not do that? Three and a half hours from now, the be our one listener on hold for that long. Can they? What's hang in on? it for me, the listener? The listener will get prizes from our prize, million dollar prize. Uh, and just have a, has a great time chilling out on our show. They can, they can. We, yeah, we'll talk we, to them every so often. We got phoneers coming. Do you up. have to listen to edge? Nature's Best when you're on hold at the no, Edge? No, you'll be listening to the Edge nonstop. Oh eight hundred the Edge. Call in now if you want to be on hold for. We'll see a New Zealand record, eh? Yeah. The New Zealand record for the longest time ever spent on hold. Call in the Edge right now. Oh eight hundred the Edge. We're going to ruin old customer service records forever. I actually can't believe this, but all of our phone lines are ringing wow. right now. Wow. Okay, you'll, you'll meet our world bra- world record breaking phone call holder next. <laughs> if you've just joined us, what we are it? trying to uh, find someone who wants to set a New Zealand record for longest time on customer service um, hold. We are uh, going to put someone on the edge hotline who's going to be with us all show, just stuck on call waiting. Yep, and we've got someone on the You're phone. You're not going to be able to read that name, are you? What's her name, Chang? I can't pronounce it. Is it Uvini? <laughs> Uvini? Yeah. Uvini? Yeah, that's perfect. Or Uvini? Uvini. 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 Hey, Uvini. Welcome to the show. You're going to be our lucky caller on hold today. Wow, lucky. Awesome. It's You're going to set so good. the record for longest time spent on hold. How are you feeling about that? I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> What's going on in your life? That gives you um, this much time to spare. <laughs> um, it's my day off today, so I'm applying for jobs. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. so you're, you're having a day off your job so you can get a better job. Yes. <laughs> what, what sort of job are you looking yeah, for? Yeah, maybe, maybe we could use the power of the radio to help you find a job. What job do you want? Um, I'm looking for a graduate job. Oh, calm down. I was thinking McDonald's. <laughs> look out. Look, well, maybe we could assist you with that. Are you ready to start setting this record? Sure. Actually, I want to know, are you calling from a landline or a cell phone? I'm calling from a cell phone. How much battery life do you have? Because you have to last <laughs> till 7 o'clock to make sure you win this prize from our million dollar prize uh, cupboard. It's plugged in at the moment. Oh. Chang, Chang would also like you to call back from a landline because he's worried about paying the 0800 charges. <laughs> Even though he doesn't do the finances for the company, he's very tight. Okay, uh, you hold there. You are going to help us set this world record, okay? Okay, sure. Just one more time, say your name just so we don't pronounce it wrong for the rest of the day. Um, it's Yuvini. Megan got it perfect, right? Sharon, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yuvini. Yep, no worries. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. Let's um, just check in quickly with our world record-breaking person on hold, Yuvini. Y- Uni, hello. Hi. I still haven't got your name right. Yuvini. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. You've, oh, been, okay. you've been on hold now for 11 minutes. How's it going? What have you learned? Anything? Anything good to report? Any jobs found? Um, no, still doing one application. Okay, oh, do you okay. want to th- maybe throw your email address out quickly and maybe some jobs could be emailed <laughs> through to you? Um, no, it's, it's okay. Oh, man, how badly do you want a job? Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge! My fellow human beings and homo sapiens, congratulations, we have reached... A new low <laughs> in society. Well done. What do you mean? Okay, guys, there's a new thing out. I'm not even 100% sure what it is. I think it is a Kardashian video game. Clint, can you elaborate? No, I can't. I've Shares never Dog heard of that. Cher's Dog has been playing this uh, for most of today. It's been her obsession over the weekend. This was going to blow your mind, and this might make... Some people out there who don't have a lot of money or are struggling, this may make you sick and maybe make you vomit. Shaz Dog, on the weekend, spent 98 <sighs> New Zealand dollars on a Kardashian video app. Don't go red. No. Don't go red. Don't deny it. And she's playing it right now. I That's am, how doing, bad it is. I'm doing a, I've got to do a complete three photo shoots for the Summer Mist ad campaign so that I can be a C-grade celebrity. I'm not... And I've got to no. do it by the end of tomorrow. And so I'm really trying to get through the second one. I'm working hard to the bone, guys. So what's the, what is the idea of the game? Well, it's the Kim Kardashian game. Yeah. And you can... Is it the idea to become famous like Kim Kardashian? Yeah. Oh, Stephen's calling. Stephen's calling. He's my agent. Is there an option to do a sex tape during the game? 
Um, no, not yet. Actually, because that's like a cheat. I feel like that's the cheat that she <laughs> used yeah, yeah, yeah. to um, leapfrog up Life. the game. No, you, is there a, is there a cheat code we can punch in for sex tape? I am working really hard on this game. Basically, do you? you do like photo shoots. Yesterday, get this, guys. I bought a condo and an apartment. I got a condo this in is, Miami because I work part time at the Dash store, okay. and then in LA, I've got a um, a really nice like apartment. This is not ninety eight real dollars that you spend. Is it like real money? Yeah. Well, yes, because I kept running this out of crazy. energy because I was working so hard. This and so then crazy. I had to wait four minutes to get new energy each time. So I'd have to keep putting the phone down for ages just so I could do some of my photo shoot. And it was a, really annoying. A hundred real life dollars show. And there Think was just like a, a show. Real- Put your phone down. Think about this for a second. Mm-hmm. Think about this. It's really a addictive. Money. It's, it's kind of like Sims. If you've ever played Sims before, it's kind of yeah, like that. It's a knockoff of that. It's not worse. a good way to spend your money, and there's no way you can say that it is. No, but like it still it still brings me fun times. <laughs> this is this I'm is going unbelievable. I'm on a date with a guy named a baseball let's player. Let's do in an some hour. group therapy here. Yeah, let's yeah. let's put this out to everybody, and because the first step to recovery is admitting that you have a problem. Yeah. So what we want to do this afternoon is get some people to call in on 0800 the Edge and admit to what they are wasting money on. I don't think I'm the only one though, Amy. You know someone that's addicted to this game as well. I do I want to name and shame Matt Lloyd? From Rolleston Christchurch has made it to A grade celebrity status oh my on God. the second game. Yeah. That and he have... is the most macho boys club boy, and I wanted to name and shame him of on the line. He's from yeah. Rolleston and Christchurch. You need to do it. You, should, you need to do it. Hey, um, when, when we get you off the line, give Sh- um, um, Chang his phone number because we can call him up later. Has, yeah, he, wasted, has he wasted real money on the, his game? Yeah. <laughs> Real money. Wow, this is blowing my mind. It is crazy. I, I don't blame him. It's very, very addictive. Thanks for your call, Amy. Okay. Okay. An okay. hour ago, an hour ago, I didn't even realise there was such a thing as a Kardashian game. Just before... It's not a Kardashian game. It's Kim's game. It's, it's not all of It's the stupidest game. thing I've ever heard of in my life. Well, you haven't played it. On the it. weekend, I've seen it, and it looks shocking. Okay. Sharon spent $100... On a Kardashian app game piece of crap. This is a sickness that is sweeping New Zealand. People are texting in like cheat codes and like secret ways. Who's cheating at the Kardashian game? Well, hopefully people who don't want to spend a hundred bucks on it. Not only yeah, well, now I know that. No. I've just I've just got myself like four stars. Not only are you playing the Kardashian game, but you're cheating at that game. <laughs> now we had someone call in to name and shame someone. This is a fully grown man who's up to A list celebrity. He's up to the top level of the Kardashian game. What an Honor. No. That is really hard. To, I'm a degrade Matt. celebrity on the game right now. It's really hard. Matt, welcome to the show, Your <laughs> Majesty. Cool. G'day. How are you? We're, we're great. So how did you get into Kim Kardashian's game? <laughs> oh, I think it was you guys. The, the radio station has okay. been always talking about it. So. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Can't, can't have been us. How did you get so good at it with, you know, like it's a really hard game. <laughs> oh, it's just once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> Matt, so true. Matt, if the radio station told you to jump off a bridge, would you go and do that? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, so Matt, 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 the reason we call is because your friend named and shamed you. Are you happy to admit to being a Kardashian app game addict? Uh, we're not had it. I was always on it. Can you say it? Hey, hey, mate, admitting <laughs> is the first step to recovery. Yeah. Say right now, hi, I'm Matt from Canterbury, and I am a Kardashian addict. Oh, I was, I was. Say I'm it. deleted now. Say, say, it, say, it. Point, so. say it on say, radio. Say the words, Matt. <laughs> I'm here for you, Matt. I'm here for you. Oh, thank you. He's not going to say it, He's guys. not going to say it. it. No, he's I'm not, not going to say, say it. it. He's, Matt, he's not recovered. Me. He's hey, going to relapse. You're sick, mate. He's how going long, back in. How long did it take you to get to... <laughs> a, no, 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 no. Cut him off, cut him off. 0800 The Edge, what have you wasted money on? Hey, Andrea, what is the worst thing you've spent money on? Um, it's actually my partner. Um, yeah. And up until the end of July, he had wasted an excess of $5,000. $5,000 on a game? Did he know he was speechless. Did he know he was spending that, Andrea, or did he not realise it was ticking up so much? Um, I don't think he realised until things got bad between us when he wasn't paying his bills and I got all these calls saying, oh, you know, you haven't paid this, and then I did some investigation. Are you guys still together? Are you still together now? Yeah, yeah, we, we're still together. He has, he, me and my, has he stopped playing the game? So, um, he hasn't. 
Um, but as far as I know, he's not spending anymore. I don't this, this know. This is like, it's like a gambling addiction. This yeah. is sickness. That is crazy, Andrea. Wow. Thank you for you sharing call. it, and good luck with getting help, because that is unbelievable. <laughs> I wish he was playing the Kardashian game, though. GC, what's your story? Hi there. Um, when I was 11, I spent over $700 on voting for the Big Brother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God. Was, was this a- yeah, season one of Big Brother? Um, when Blair was there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it an 0900 yeah, and, number situation? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, then, and then my mum found out through the uh, phone bill, and then, yeah. And then we had nowhere to live. That is, and 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 I <laughs> <laughs> that is insane, GC. I cannot believe that. Big Brother. Remember when Big Brother was good? Yeah. It was a good time. I don't remember it being good, but I, I remember even, it. I don't remember it being $700 good. <laughs> I quite was, like the bum dance, but I wouldn't spend 700 bucks on it. That was the season that Ben won, which I think was the Sarah Marie bum dance year. Okay, everybody. Look, Shaz, just take some time out. Maybe you want to give me your phone for the rest of the show. No, because I've really got to get this uh, thing done, otherwise the lady's not going to give me another job. No, Sharon, you've got to stop right now. I'm confiscating your phone. I'm no, confiscating... No, I'm about to go to date for the your, baseball your phone. Your phone's being confiscated. Sky, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. What month are we in? September. The first day of September. The night. Oh well, shiver. It's good. I only learnt the months when I was like at university, so I'm not. I'm still not that good at them. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit moronic. Anyway, um, with the show that then has been going for like nine months, right? Am I right? Hey, happy nine month anniversary, guys! Suck oh, it, lovely. Suck it. And anyone who's been listening to the show for about nine months will know that every that I'm from Nelson for a start. Yeah. So you and were you were in Nelson on the weekend? Did you give, me two, give me two, give me two, give me two, no, give me two six. Sorry. And they'll also know that every time I say I'm from Nelson, which is a lot, Sharon will say, which is also where you could go and visit my uncle, <laughs> my, uncle Michael at the South Street Gallery. <laughs> she does the most inappropriate. Edge plug of all time. She plugs a antique pottery shop in Nelson, mm-hmm. which is um, owned by her hus- uh, not uncle. husband, her uncle, and uh, and is not really in the edge demographic at all. Well, the thing about. is, no offense, the husband, thing is, yeah, you normally uncle. pay to get your business talked about. Yeah, he is getting some pro bono <laughs> stuff right now. Well, he is I'm getting sorry, some I'm under s- the table mentions. I'm sorry if I want to promote to our special listener friends where they can buy some beautiful. <laughs> New Zealand designed anyway, hey, pottery. Cut the crap, cut the crap. I actually, on the weekend, went to Nelson. <gasps> Did you go to the South Street Gallery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, you just don't let me get to it. I got to go and visit the South Street Gallery. Oh! And Nelson, amazing, right? Was it? Did you have the best? Did you Did you see the kiln? Hey, I did see. The, I saw the kiln. Awesome. I saw all the coffee mugs, and we'll um we'll go to clip number two here first because guess what, Sharon? What? I actually got to interview <gasps> your uncle Michael. Oh! And here's a bo- here's the big bombshell. Not only do I think that he doesn't listen to the show, <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure that he's even heard of the Edge radio station. I gave him a clip. I gave him a. I gave him a quiz, and this is when I spoke to him. Check this out. Are you actually a great fan of the Edge? Terrific. Name one artist we play on the Edge. Uh, Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> my uncle, my uncle has no time for anything that is not Radio New Zealand or the sound. <laughs> that is that is Shaz Dog's uncle Michael. Michael, am I right? Yes. He is the nicest, coolest guy. You got to go to South Street Gallery, if not to buy anything, just for a laugh. Like I'm in there in the store. There's no one in there early Sunday morning, and an American tourist walks in and he goes, "How you going, mate?" The guy doesn't respond or look at him at all, <laughs> and he goes, "You see that, bro? Customer service." <laughs> <laughs> it was high quality. So what I tried to do when I was in Nelson at the South Street, famous South Street Gallery, I. Tried Tried to organise uh, a discount for Edge listeners. It didn't go great. So, what sort of um, specials do we have on at the South Street Gallery today? We don't have specials at all. <laughs> no specials. None whatsoever. Quality this good is just <laughs> universal. Because <laughs> I look around and I go, "You've got a lot of um, cups here. You might want to move some stock. Maybe you should um, offer some sweet discounts for Edge listeners." No. <laughs> Sharon's uncle him. Michael, he is the absolute I love man. Him. If you tell him that I sent you though, he'll definitely give you three dollars off a it cup. It doesn't because... sound like he will. <laughs> he will. He gave someone that went in there the other week a three dollars off a cup. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. It's time to have some fun with the cash cannon. Helmets on. The edge cash cannon is about to blow. In the studio with us at the moment, Robbie and Ryan, two of our Love You Man contestants. Woo! Hello, Congratulations on making top three this morning. Thank you. This morning is a bit of a backstory. We took these guys to Eden Park, where you're going to get married uh, if you win. 
and we hid the wedding ring somewhere under one of the 47,000 seats. We had the whole top three there race to find it. You two found it first, Woo-hoo! which means as a little reward, you get to shoot a cash cannon each this afternoon as well. Sweet. And you get to keep the money that comes out. Are you in need of money at the moment? No, I'm not too bad. <laughs> Stop about it, mate. Do you we'll just want to shoot like a dream cannon full of money? I oh, pretty just. I just want to shoot it at you. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I tell you what. We'll let, we'll let you go first. Yeah, then. Robbie, you can pick a cannon first. Who's you want? Guys, Guys Sharon's, or Clint's? Who's you want? Ooh, I'll probably go guy for guy. All right. All here right. we go. And go you can guy. shoot it at me because you're lucky. Let's do it. He's picked my cannon. He's going to shoot it at me. I'll shoot go right shoot me in the chest so it doesn't hurt too much. <laughs> man up, man. Three. Oh! <laughs> on three. There's money everywhere. We've got to find out how much money's in there. We're counting desperately. He just I've shot got it, it. I've got it. He shot it a bit soon. You came a bit early. You have won two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Congratulations, Robbie. Before we give you a turn, Ryan, we're going to give one of our listeners a turn. Hello, Emma. Welcome to the show. Hello. Now, who would you like to shoot your cannon? You can choose between myself or Clint. A warning, a warning, dog. Emma. What, what, I, bef- yeah. yeah. You, you've, you've made up your mind already. You've made up your yeah. mind already. <laughs> Don't listen to Emma. I was just going to say, Emma, one of the cannons has uh, more money in it than two fifty, and, and one of them has less money in it than two fifty. And well, so I listen every afternoon, and I always think if I ha- if I got a chance, I choose Shaz. All right, this Yay! is your chance. Grab your okay. cannon, Shaz. Hang on, Emma. I'll grab my cannon. I've got it. Okay. <laughs> Let me put my headphones on so I can hear you. She's going to nail me. I can feel it. Emma? <laughs> yes? Here we go. I, I am going to nail you, Robbie. Hit <laughs> <laughs> me in the back Three, two, one. one. Oh, that was a big explosion. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Emma, I'm really, really sorry, but you've won $50. <laughs> Okay, that's better than nothing. Well, oh, good attitude. Good attitude. We'll check in a Jason Derulo CD, mate. Wait there. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I feel terrible. I always have the good run, so that means that we've got one cannon left. We have one cannon left. It is Clinton's cannon. Now, Ryan, this thank is you, my cannon. Treat it nicely oh, and well, shoot mate. it at what or whoever you like, and whoever much is in there is all yours, my friend. Hey, guys, Smack turn around. A <laughs> guy's getting it again. <laughs> you've got a shootable <laughs> face, mate. Oh, Can we go, Clint? Clint, 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 Clint. Just get it over Here we go. Off. Three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. <laughs> Nothing came oh, out. Didn't come oh, out. Oh, yeah. Gas it again. Gas it again. False alarm. I screamed. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Uh, there we uh, go. Uh, $350. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Congratulations, boys. Spend it wisely and good luck. Do you want to give a quick plug to your voting? Oh yeah. yeah. Thanks for everyone who's voting for us. Um, keep the votes coming in. Um, yeah, top three. Here it's we go. money! Robbie and Ryan, two of our I Love You Man contestants. Thank you, boys. Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. It's kind of insane, the news that's come out today. We were away when it broke, and we came back, and all of a sudden, the hugest story had uh, blown up. Jennifer Lawrence has had her, um, her iCloud from her iPhone hacked, mm. and... Tons of naked photos of her, explicit, completely not safe for work photos, leaked onto the internet. And it wasn't just Jennifer Lawrence today. It was a lot of different celebrities. Ariana Grande, Victoria Justice, Hayden Panettiere, Kate Upton, Hilary Duff, Selena Gomez, and there's even a couple of Kim Kardashian. Well, we, we've already said what Kim Kardashian's say, got, Kim, but, you Kim know, Kardashian was not making headlines anymore. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, sweet ones, as. The Jennifer Lawrence ones are exploding, A, because... She looks amazing, but B because of who she is and because she's such okay. a um, highly respected. She goes about herself to be like not a typical Hollywood person, all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of more of a bigger deal that she's done it. They're full on. I've seen them. Yeah. Uh, have you seen them, guy? Yeah. My first thought when I first heard this was, "Let me see those photos. Let me see those photos. Let me see those photos." <laughs> but then, as soon as I saw the photos, I was like, "Holy shit! Imagine if that was me." No, I don't want to imagine that was you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, see, don't get that image out of your head. Sometimes I can't put myself in those shoes right. because I saw them and I was like, damn, I wish that was me. Oh, so that's a different, not, that's a different reaction not again. The fact, not the, the fact that, you know, that they'd been leaked to the world. I yeah. just meant if I had some pictures and I looked that good at them, I would be like, if they went out to the world, i have the Rihanna attitude that she had when they came out, which is... I look good, whatever. <laughs> okay, well, that's a different way of looking at no, it. No one's going to be surprised now if she goes nude in a movie. 
because we've all seen it, she's probably now isn't will get it, more movie parts. Isn't it terrifying though that someone can hack into you? So I never trusted iCloud. That's mess, it's messed up. Call me, call me as con- conspiracy theorist, but I don't want my stuff in a cloud. <laughs> I don't want my stuff in a cloud. I don't trust clouds. I, I barely know where my photos go on my phone when I take them now. You're telling me you're sending them to a cloud? I can't handle that. I, I don't even know what's in my cloud. That's the thing, though, that is quite scary, is that there's all those T's and C's about that new Facebook messenger that Facebook are making everybody get on their apps. Yeah. And that gives Facebook full control of your phone. So I they, can, they can go into your photos. They can go into your everything. So that, What does Facebook want on my phone? Exactly. So that could be Zuckerberg, another way. Zuckerberg, are you looking for my nudes? <laughs> Exactly. See, that could be another way that someone from Facebook could get into your phone is through that way. They can access your contacts, everything. Oh, man. You- I wonder if it has happened to regular... It happens to celebrities all the time. Yeah. Happened to Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Happened to Aaron Smith from the Miley All Blacks. Cyrus. Um, has it happened... Does Miley Cyrus have nudes? Yeah. Has it happened... She was one of the first to have to nudes. A, to a real Kiwi, to just a normal, non-celebrity... Normal person. We'd love to hear from someone like that this afternoon on 0800 The Edge. Or you can text us to 3343 as well. Did your nudes get leaked? And what was it like? What was? What did it yeah. feel like? Yeah. Can't feel, it can't be good. If, no. Please May- go out to Jennifer Lawrence, eh? Hey? Maybe you did it... Your, your prayers? Prayers? When yeah, did you I guys reckon. go to yeah. church? This is cool. Yeah, I, I'm signed up for church now. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> it is The Edge. Amen and God bless. <laughs> The secret to a good nude is if you you got to get like the lighting right and you don't expose too much. You know, are we, we we going now? Okay. Yeah, no, we're on now. That was my. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. That was totally inappropriate. Appropriate. Well, I just always like to add on to that. Always black and white or sepia, and never put your head in it. <laughs> you always choose one. Are you going to go upstairs or downstairs? Never put your head in it. That's the lesson that um, I think Rihanna learned because she when hers leaked, she had no face in it. Oh, like Rihanna can talk anyway. She just <laughs> she wears no clothes majority yeah, of the time. Rihanna's good, nude. Good point. Rihanna's she nude. Nude dress. Yeah, Rihanna's latest nude just leaked. It's her new music video. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence has had her nudes uh, stolen off her phone. Uh, that news broke today, and it's uh, it's quite shocking. And it's also shocking how many New Zealanders have had this happen to them. Yeah. I had no idea. The texts are flooding in. Um, people are saying that uh, they had nudes stolen um, off the phone, uh, and they only found out when a when a colleague texts me, imagine how awkward that would be. Imagine for Jennifer Lawrence as well, when you're just having a normal day, everything's fine, and you get a call from your agent or someone who's close to you going, hey, just lay low for a while. All your naked phones from your, photos from your phone have just gone out into the world. I'd be oh, so God. humiliated. Imagine, be if, imagine if your mum had just got up and she's like, oh, Mike, give Jennifer a Google this morning. <laughs> and she just happened <laughs> she's today to, give her, oh. you, yeah. to go and Google her daughter and then, oh, God. <laughs> so bad. Someone, so text, bad. someone texts in saying, I intent- I, oh, no, sorry, I accidentally uploaded a DP to my storyline and Snapchat. <laughs> I spent the next 10 minutes trying to find out, delete, 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 couldn't oh, delete it. And it was on your story as well, so everybody could have a look at it. it yeah, it's it's got to be the worst thing. Someone texts in to say they had a friend who had a flatmate add a video camera into their room. Oh. It's getting to the point now where it's just bordering on like a major offence. And I hope yeah. the person who did this to Jennifer Lawrence goes to jail. We've got someone on the phone. Hi, Caitlin. Tell us the story about when you unfortunately had your nudes leaked. Yeah, so <laughs> this was when I was in um, college. I was year 13. Yeah. Um, and my phone got stolen out of my bag. And the lovely boy who stole my phone decided to save the photos um, to his phone and forwarded them to pretty much everyone I knew. Wow. What? Yeah. I, I, the, the main question for me is, and not in a judgy way, but this is the first question that comes to mind when this happens, why did you have nude photos on your phone in the first place? Well, uh, my boyfriend at the time, we decided to share photos. I mean... You know, yeah. we were always together, but we decided to share photos of, like, an exciting thing, you know, text them to each other. Yeah. But, um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. It's a lot of fun in your personal time. You've never done it, Clint. God, don't say it like you've done it. No one's looking for I've your done, nose. I've got, like, 12 no one, of them, mate. No one's sitting there going, oh. I'll send them to you. I'll text you right you, now. I don't, I don't want, want them, them either. Right no, did, I don't want them. Did you make the massive mistake, Caitlin, of putting your face in the photo so that you couldn't deny it wasn't you? Um, no, it, my, my face wasn't in the photos, but... Everyone knew that it was me because they knew that my phone had got stolen. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, Caitlin, yeah. when it happened, how how did yeah. you feel? Oh, it was horrible. Like we tried to get the teachers to do stuff, and like we tried to get my phone back, and it took like 
two months to get my phone back. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, it was a horrible. Did you find that some people um, didn't actually feel sorry for you? Like, some people sort of treated you like it was your fault? Oh, yeah, people definitely did that. I mean... I had guys, like, laughing and stuff at me at school, and I was, like, crying, you know? I, I just so remember being so upset. Yeah. Yeah. I am so sure that must be illegal. How old were you? Um, uh, I was either 17 or 18. Yeah. I'm so sure it must be yeah. illegal in some form. You, you can only imagine how Jennifer Lawrence must be feeling right now. Yeah. I don't I don't know Jennifer Lawrence for a bar of salt. I've only seen half of one of her movies. <laughs> and I, I'm going to say, it must be... I couldn't hack it. I couldn't hack it. So she's being so strong. It's so impressive that she's uh, getting through this because I would... I would I would cry. Definitely. You know yeah. what, though? If I looked like her, I'd be I'd be licking my own nerd. <laughs> no. Hey, mate, thank you so I much. Um, Kevin, thank you so much for calling, mate. That's um, yeah, it's horrible. but very glad, interesting. Yeah, glad you got through it. Okay, all right, there we go. Nudes, they're a thing. Watch out for it. Yeah, don't take naked photos. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio... Jeepers, these are the hardest names we've ever had to pronounce. <laughs> Sally. That was hard. Chu. Shu. 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 Is that right? That's Shu? <laughs> yep, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and Victor Labushange. Is that, <laughs> is that correct before we clap? Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, it's pronounced Labuskachni. <laughs> 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 love it, love it, love it. Now, welcome to the studio, guys. Um, you'll be forgiven for not knowing who these guys are unless you read the paper this morning like I did. I was reading the Herald um, on my app over breakfast this morning and stumbled across a pretty incredible story regarding you two. Um, Sally, you're sick. Yes, I am. Yeah. But it was blunt. <laughs> well, that- why don't you guys tell us your story about why you guys were in the Herald this morning? Uh, so we're trying to raise money for Sally. She's currently got Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yeah. She's been through all the funded treatments that's available in New Zealand public system. Yeah. And there's a new drug called Brentuximab. It's not yet funded in New Zealand. How, how do you pronounce? How do you say it? Uh, is Brentuximab correct? Or- I think it's Brentuximab. I'm it's not sure. Brent yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You're not going to be able to find it for them. Guys. <laughs> I can't afford yeah. it, and that's the main thing. Um, yeah. So this is the treatment that you need to get better? Um, yes, there's yeah. a chance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how much does it cost? That was the bit that blew my mind. That's an important thing. Yeah. So we're looking for the first nine treatments. We yeah. need $150,000. Wow. Um, wow. With a possibility of up to $300,000 for full treatment. $300,000? Yeah. And this isn't something you can jump on that Benji Marshall health insurance and they'll pay for it for you? Uh, no. Unfortunately, she did not have health insurance when she got diagnosed. Yeah. Um, so, therefore, we can't... Well, tra- well, being that young, you don't think about it. Like, yeah. I don't have health, health insurance and I'm 26. So, so it's ha- not something yep, that crosses your mind. How old are you? Me. I just turned 24. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I was diagnosed when I was 20. So. Yeah. And so you've been fighting it since then. Yeah. And you're on this medicine now, right? The the yep. one that you're raising money for. Yep. I just had my thre- third treatment about an hour ago. And do you sort of pay <laughs> as you go? An hour ago? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> well, thank, thank you, you for coming Congratulations. <laughs> thank you for coming so in. So really how, does, how, does uh, how does this treatment that you want, what, was, what will it do for you? Will it shrink your kind of tumours and stuff like that? Or how does it work? That's not a technical term, by the way. We're complete idiots. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I have no idea what's going no, on. Much better myself. In layman's yeah. terms. <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, what it does? Yeah. The idea is to shrink the tumours yeah. and hopefully to stop the actual tumours from regrowing. Yeah. To stop the, whatever's causing the cancer. God, it's a lot of money, isn't it? I'd yeah. just like to point out that I said that correctly. <laughs> she just gave me an in your face. <laughs> shrink your tumours <laughs> is the correct term. And yeah. so far, you've had three treatments so far of this and it is working for you? Is it shrinking your tumours? Well, I had an x-ray about two weeks ago. Yeah. And it showed that something shrink yeah yep so wow um, yeah so, so th- this money that we're trying to raise will save your life won't it hopefully y- hopefully, hopefully. But I, i'm pretty positive because i am yeah. feeling very good yeah and i am having a scan on friday yeah so it will tell us a little bit more fantastic because this is not just an issue that affects you it's for everyone in new zealand that is suffering from hodgkin's lymphoma i can't say any words i'm sorry i'm so unprofessional <laughs> that's how we gave him a job on the radio so this is something yeah. that almost uh, almost do you have a message for the government is this something that you'd like them to fund 
Um, Because they're listening. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, At the moment, the idea is to actually bring it in and fund it soon. Yeah. They're looking at about two years from now or three years from now. We don't have time. We've got to start now, don't we? This this morning, you guys had raised about $25,000 before that article went up. Yes. And today, about another $12,000 has come in. Is that right? That's correct. So what we want to do now is just tell everybody about this this fundraiser that you're doing and try and pull in some money if you've got five bucks, if you've got 20 bucks, if you've got 100 bucks, if you've got something you want to give to this you can do it online and we've put it up on our facebook page chess dog yep give a little oh sorry facebook.com forward slash edge afternoons if you go there there is a there is a link straight away off to the save sally uh website at the moment the latest where do i find out the total Damn it! I thought it would be there. You like the lady at the on, moment. On you've the got thirty seven thirty seven thousand six hundred and twenty nine dollars. So we need to get to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So yeah. as Clint said before, anything that you have, even if it's from your company or whatever, just whatever you can yeah, do. Yeah, trick your boss into it. There's a good idea. Yeah. I work for the Edge. I'll try and con them into something. Yeah, because what are they going to do? Get you in trouble for donating to charity? <laughs> um, no, it's a good thing to do. <laughs> All right. Hey, Victor and Sally, thank you for coming in, guys. I know it's a big ask to come, especially an hour after treatment. Yeah, thank you guys for having us today. Hey, and good luck. I urge you to go and put some money towards this. You can find the details on our Facebook page. Go and check it out. Awesome. Cool. Guy Sharon and Clint. Edge. If you if you were joined if you joined us a long time ago at the beginning of the show, we had an idea to put someone on hold for the whole show. Um, it's not over yet, but I'm just checking. Um, are you still there, listener friend? Yes, I am. <laughs> Good effort. You've been on hold for two hours. Yep. Does Three it suck? hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah did, 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 were you saying yeah to it does suck? Um, I can't actually see hmm, the time on my phone. You've been on there, uh, l- last I checked, uh, you were, <laughs> you've been on there for two hours. Where are you, where are you, where are you at the moment? Um, I'm in Auckland. Have you spotted any um, hot celebs recently? No, I haven't. No, okay, because I was just going to... Uh, sorry, what were you going to say? Shortland Street. <laughs> Shortland Street Shortland people, that's pretty oh, good. Who, that from, who from Shortland Street did you say? Um... So famous I that you can't been... remember. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Because I had some celebrity uh, spotting encounters this weekend, guys. I don't want to brag about it, but I went to Auckland Airport flying to Nelson, and I saw... Did you pop into the three, South Street Gallery? Three. I did. When I was in Nelson, I did, but yeah. this is at Auckland Airport. Thank you, Shaz Dog, okay. for bringing that up again. I thought we put that to rest when I went to South Street Gallery earlier in the show. But anyway, we'll continue. I had three hot celebs. Listen to this. Listen to who I saw there. Who's the big guy who's the judge on um, New Zealand Idol? Frankie Stevens. Frankie Ste- I saw Frankie Stevens. Okay. Oh, yeah. I saw the Prime Minister of New Zealand, John Key. Okay. G'day, guys. Yep. He was at St. Luke's on the weekend. And I saw the scariest man I've ever run into in my life, Hone Hadawera. Oh, were you scared of Hone He's Hadawera? Into, yeah, I'll tell you why, because I was doing a John and Ben sketch with him once. Yeah. And he, um, he told me to F off. <laughs> <laughs> you should be used to people telling you to F off by now. You were scared of everybody who told you to F off. You wouldn't go home and see your parents. <laughs> I, um, we, ha- we were supposed to have him as a special guest on our show, and we were a little bit late coming to get him, yeah. and we called him on the phone, and he told us to get f Do you know what? My hot celebrity airport encounter. Yeah. I was at the airport wearing track pants, no makeup, a rangy-ass T-shirt, with my husband, so that's why I hadn't dressed up, because I'm like, eh, you've seen me at my best, we're married. And we're walking through, and my husband knows a few of the All Blacks and he goes oh the All Blacks are here and he goes oh g'day mate how's it going and I looked up and I was like died inside he was talking to Richie and Richie looked at me like well, is, Sharon is this another Richie story yeah no but I saw him at the airport you saw- <laughs> I saw him at the airport and my husband spoke to him and I Sharon. looked terrible but it was Sharon, Sharon. Sharon. it's moving away from uh, just oh occasionally I bumped into Richie at the gym I, bunch- I bumped into Richie at the airport it's turning into a I'm real problem I'm sorry you are bordering on a police restraining order man. I am sorry but Richie McCaw <laughs> beats your crappy story <laughs> no, 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 it about Jonky hey, 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 Honey hey, Hadawera hey, 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 and hey, Frankie hey, Stevens hey, but I'm not stalking Frankie Stevens Honey <laughs> Hadawera and John Key around New Zealand well, you may you're as following well. this guy you this is, well. you're sick in the head mate I was at the airport first he followed me <laughs> Hey, let's call, let's call it a draw. Richie McCaw is not stalking Sharon. Yes, he is. I was there first. <laughs> Next on the and show. Since the airport is stalking, Scandal. he was stalking me. It's and I was edge. okay about it, and I sniffed his With hair. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Edge. Right now, we're going to try and help you out. We're going to provide a public service. Call in 
with terms, lingo, slang that you don't know the meaning to, and Guy, Sharon and Clint will try and help decipher these codes of the youth, these young expressions that we can't hold on to. Mm. And the reason is, is because I discovered that on the internet, you can find new meanings for exciting things everywhere. everywhere. Okay. Okay. I was just, what we do now when we get people to call in, that's called a phoner. And I decided to try and find out how to spell phoner, so I googled it. Do you not know how to spell phoner? No, I didn't. Well, it's how do you spell phone, it? It's phone with an R. Yeah, well, I figured that out now. <laughs> but <laughs> then, phoner. I had to google it, right? Because, but you, you laugh. But I googled it, and this is what I got. Phoner. The act of achieving erection while sexting. Oh, God. Example. Vicky, did you get that picture I sent to you last night? Michael. Yeah, definitely got a phoner from it. Wow. That <laughs> That's is, pretty gold. Uh, that is not ideal. Leon but. tells us we have to have a minimum of four phoners per show. <laughs> <laughs> We've had too many phoners today already. So 0800 the edge I've got a phoner in, right now. Text into three, I don't think three, you four, can three. get a phoner. <laughs> yeah, how do you know? Wow, that's, a good, naked? That's, that's a good point. <laughs> Just saying, I don't limp for any damn Guys, reason apart from I've got a big one. The phoners are distracting us because right now we need to help people out. People are texting in phrases they don't understand. You guys can help us as well. Someone's just texted in, WTF is skucks. Skucks. Oh, skucks. <laughs> Look it up. Skucks. Skucks, bro. Skucks. Or in my day was, ooh, that guy skucks. Are you, you, you going to look it up? I'm going to look it up. What do you guys think it means? Skucks is like a super ass babe. Yeah, like suave. I think skucks it, means um, a blonde patch at the back of your head and a big um, uh, fake diamond earring. Skucks was like the early 2000s version of swag. Skucks. It's like a, a dude who shaved the side of his head real short, yeah. but the top of his head into kind of a cool mohawk. Yeah, that's Skucks Deluxe. They gel in, Yeah, Skucks Deluxe. Definition, a guy who has it well with the female gender. Ah. Mm-hmm. You know Skucksness, it. a natural aura, the ability to pull babes. Michelle, what do you want a guy to look up for you? Meh. Meh. Because if I ask him how their day goes or how their party <laughs> was or whatever yeah. the case may be, they say meh. Meh. How meh. Would, yeah. Michelle, how would you spell meh? Oh, well, I don't know how I would spell it, but they <laughs> spell it M E H. M E H. Are your kids giving you this quite a lot? All the time, every day, everything I ask them, it's always a mess. So I've got some bad news for you, Michelle. Mm-hmm. According to the Urban Dictionary, meh is indifference. When si- one simply does not care. Oh, what no. do you want for dinner? <laughs> meh. Can you drive me to hospital? Meh. <laughs> do you have the drugs I ordered for my problem with my kidney? Meh. meh. Oh, my gosh. Is that pretty much that what is you expected? Is, is that what you expected, though? Yes, a little bit boring and interesting. Oh, yeah. you were hoping yeah. you were hoping that it was Mum Excellent Helmet Day. <laughs> Mum Excellent Ham Roast. Mum Excellent, I'm home. Someone's oh, texted. That's no, right. Someone's texted. What is a Portuguese breakfast? Don't look that up. I do, do not, not want to Google that. that. Don't look that. Look it up. I actually don't, don't know what it is. Look it up. Don't look it up, trust me. Well, look it up next. Now, just before the break, if you've just joined us, someone asked me to find out what a Portuguese breakfast is. So I'm going to Google it now. And uh, Portuguese I breakfast. I really don't think you should do that. Type it in. <laughs> oh! Is it something you can say? I, can, I don't think I can say it at all. I would not recommend... This is not okay for people... Uh, on the internet, a Portuguese breakfast. No! Do not Google that. Don't even say it again. Hang on. Okay. Let me look. Let not me say it. I know I can say it. <laughs> Taking a funnel and no. No, 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 no. Let's move on, okay? Thank you oh for that God. one. Here's who a cleaner is, one. Who would even let someone do that? Uh, here's a cleaner one. Someone's. Yuck. Someone's texting. What do, <laughs> someone's texting? Um, what does OTP mean? Oh, on the piss. Oh, that's easy. That was an easy one. Yeah, that was... one's done. We, we're making progress. Here's much better. <laughs> Here's another one. What's F Y O B? If you no, 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 it's not a sweet word. I feel word. like because it's got an F in it, it's going to be bad. It's not that bad. If, if uh, my guess is that it's if you on about okay yeah that's what i was just trying to say oh that's what you're trying to say yeah oh you said you but you're oh, yeah. Uh, yeah you starts with a y guys uh, okay 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 here's here's um here's one it's for your own benefit oh it means heaps of things for your own benefit yeah or find your own booze oh i think brilliant. for your own be- benefit is good it's okay. like hey this is just a bit of information for you sir 
We've got a caller on the line that wants to ask as well. James, what do you want us to Urban Dictionary? <laughs> I've just had a couple of mates say it. Um, blue waffles. No! 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 no, 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 no. No, this I, segment is going terribly is wrong. No, I, segment no. is going terribly wrong. What's next? Mariah, Mariah, <laughs> what I, do you want to Can I know? honestly say, can I, I've Googled that before. Anyone out there, don't Google Blue Waffle. Do okay. not, no one do it. <laughs> Mariah, hello. Hi. Um, I've never understood when people say Bob's your uncle. That is a good question. That is a good question. That is a very good question. I'm going to look it up. What do you guys think? I think it means that Bob Bob's is your, your uncle. <laughs> no, but what, no, but what's <laughs> the that point of saying that? It just means, like, there you have it. Yeah, oh, and Bob's your... No, there it doesn't mean, go. like, hey, presto, yeah. like... Bob's your uncle yeah, I, is I an expression I, of yeah, unknown... Yeah, a fashion show, and then someone said, oh, Bob's your uncle today. Yeah. They yeah. knew what they were meaning. Do you have an uncle called Bob? I don't. I'm no. really confused. It means pretty much, uh, I'm going to guess before you look it up, that it's, you know, that's how you do it or it's done, it's sorted out, it's finished. Yeah, like um, like the expression uh, from France, voila. There you go. Do you mean voila? voila. Do you mean voila? Oh, voila, sorry. <laughs> but like the French expression, viola. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even in the ballpark. Everything is all right, and there, there you, go. you go. That's what it means. Hey, and we're learning. We're learning something this afternoon. It's so. educational. I learn a lot of disgusting sex things. I don't know what you guys learn. Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. Who's your favourite guy in Dunedin? Everybody, it's Sean Street expert James. Hello. Good, a- good evening, James. Hello. James, it's been a huge week last week in Shortland Street. Yeah, so Dallas this week was going to propose to Bella, um, but Leanne tried to stop him by joining in on their private date. <laughs> she crashed their wedding. This is the Leanne scene of the week. Seven at the IV, don't be late. I love an assertive man, don't you? Come on. Well, I think I might join you if you don't mind. <laughs> I hate eating alone. <laughs> Makes me sad. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there's no rush, is there? <laughs> Bella might want to use the ladies' room. No. You sure? You don't want to touch up your lippy? <laughs> <laughs> she, she ruined an engagement party. Yes. Well, but, a, a proposal. Yeah, but the Dallas proposed to Bella in the end, um, even though Leanne completely ruined the moment, but um, Dallas didn't realise that the proposal was actually really similar to the way that Bella's ex-husband, who died... Um, proposed to her last year. (laughs) That's tense. Very confusing. Um, But Leanne tried to understand what Bella was feeling and relate to her, but she just got it completely wrong. It's like your dead husband reaching back from the grave. Leanne, that's not what she was going to say. (laughs) No. (laughs) That's gold. I love how Leanne always gets it wrong, without (laughs) fail, every single time. Hey, speaking of it, new favourite character of the week. So Evan is pretty much a new favourite of mine. He was the star character this week. He delivered a baby, which was really (laughs) bizarre. But um, when Kane became really depressed this week about his failed rugby career. It was quite a serious scene. Um, even just ruined it. Do you think he's not going to be gammy forever? You can still have a rugby career. You don't know that. No, I don't. But neither do you, so stop being such a sack. <laughs> <laughs> has, has anyone else noticed with Shortland Street in the last three weeks they're sta- starting to use dick and sack and like different swear words a little bit more often? <laughs> okay. It's very weird. Like, usually they'd be like, very, oh. Um, very genitalia-based yeah. insults. <laughs> oh, you're, su- you're such a binge. And now they're like, oh, good one, you sack. The other thing I noticed this week, James, I don't know if you picked up on this, but Evan all of a sudden has started working out, and he's, like, all buff now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He's got his hair cut, and he's all changed. He's a new changed man. Yeah, he, he's <laughs> definitely changed. Hey, bef- before we let you go, um, James, we've got to do the... Sarah Potts funeral recap. Sarah's funeral happened on Monday, but it was really bizarre. It seemed more like a bag out Sarah Potts session than an actual <laughs> yeah. funeral. Like a 21st. It was snowing. This was in Dunedin years ago. Uh, and she had the most appalling sheepskin boots on. <laughs> Uh, and she bumped into me, quite literally, and spilt boiling hot tomato soup over both of us. <laughs> and she forgot to apologise. How dare she? <laughs> Harper, She's dead. Harper should be up there saying, I'm so glad you did, Sarah, because now I can make my, <laughs> make my moves on your man once again. Yeah, it was like three insults straight in a row. Just <laughs> bam. It was the most awkward funeral ever, uh, ever. James, thank you so much for coming in to keep us up to date on the most important show in New Zealand, Shortland Street. James, everybody! Woo!
That Shorty okay. Street Scandal, if you want to see the video version, search Shorty Street Scandal on YouTube. Good guy, Sharon and Clint. On the urge. We're about to leave, but before we go, there's someone that we haven't forgotten about. We've been shooting for a New Zealand record for the worst customer service of all time here at The Edge, and we may just have achieved it. We've had someone on the phone lines for the entire four-hour duration of our show. Welcome back, Yuvani! Yuvani! You've done, you have done so well, and you've really, really hung in there. Do you think you'll ever listen to the show again after today? <laughs> I think I will. Oh, oh that's a yes. good result. Hey, um, at the beginning of the show, you told us you were looking for a job, and that's why you had time to sit on the phone for the whole show. Um, did yeah. you find one? Um, I've applied for two jobs so far, so yeah. Hey, good yeah. effort. That Very is awesome. good effort. Well, congratulations. We hope you find a job. No, no give her a chance right now. Ten seconds, Evany. Pitch yourself to New Zealand. Um, I'm a very hardworking <laughs> person. I have... A Undergraduate degree in economics and finance, and a postgraduate degree in economics. What? That's amazing. You're yes, more brilliant. qualified than us. Oh, yeah, except for yeah. Chang. Chang went to medical school. Yeah. And now he answers the phone. That's so impressive. For us. That's crazy. Well, congratulations. We're going to hook you up with a guy, Sharon and Clint Price, back. You have the world record, the New Zealand record at least, for the worst customer service ever. Three and a half hours you've been on hold. Awesome. Okay. See you. Just hold- Bye. Hold the line for just one more time so we can get those details. <laughs> <laughs> Today's Guy Sharon and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get Grass today from your friendly Grass vendor.